This theorem states that if you have a set of vectors that we call S, which is a subset of our N, S is going to be our spanning set. And we're going to say that if we have a vector that belongs to the span of this, so to the span of S, that's equivalent to saying that the vector is a linear combination of the vectors in the spanning set, so of the vectors in S. And so if it's a linear combination of the vectors in S, formally that means that x can be written in the form of alpha 1 x1, alpha 2, x2, and so on, where x1 and x2 are the vectors um, in the spanning set. So more formally, we can write that as x equals the sum of the alphas times the x's from i equals 1 up to n. So um, essentially we're saying that the vectors in a spanning set are basically the building blocks of the span, meaning that they're the vectors that you put together with linear combinations to get the, um, to get the span. And um, for the proof, it helps to first understand what a span actually is. So the definition itself, the definition of a span, says that a span is the intersection of all the subspaces that contain the vectors in S. So span S is the intersection of all the subspaces A of the subspaces that contain S. And uh, using the theorem on the intersection of a collection of subspaces, we can say that span S is um, automatically going to be a subspace as well. And by the way, subspace, vector space, and linear space are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter what you call it. So um, for the proof, we have to prove it both ways. It's an, it's an if and only if uh, theorem. In the first direction, we want to prove that um, if a vector belongs to the span, so if it belongs to the intersection of all of these subspaces, then the vector must be a linear combination of the vectors in the spanning set. So we start off knowing that um, A represents all of the vectors that can be written as linear combinations. And so formally, we're saying that instead of vectors, that vectors, we're going to call them x. And we're saying that um, every x is a linear combination. So it's a sum of alpha i xi from i equals, um, I equals 1 up to n. And um, we know that if we have all of the linear combinations, that means that for every x and y vectors that belong to A, x plus y also belongs to A. This is just um, applying the, the property that we just mentioned above. So this is just, um, sorry, let me just rewrite this actually. 
instead of x and y, I'm going to use x1 and x2 just to use the same notation. And also we can say that for every alpha. that is a real number, alpha x must belong to A. So these are the two conditions that must be satisfied in order to be able to conclude that this is a subspace. So now we can say that A is definitely a subspace. So basically the collection of the linear combinations is going to be a subspace. And um, since we know that this is a subspace that contains all of the vectors in the spanning set and also all the linear combinations of those, it's going to for sure contain the span of S. And um, since the span is contained in uh, the subspace, we can say that every X that belongs to the span Uh, can be written as a linear combination. So basically here we're just saying that everything that is in S in span S is also in A, which means that everything in span S um, satisfies the properties that we have for A, and so um, they can all be written as linear combinations of the vectors in S. So formally, we're saying that every x vector that belongs to the span can be written as a sum of the alphas times the x's, so as a linear combination. So now for the second part of this theorem, the second part is a bit quicker, because now we're going to say the opposite, that if we have a linear combination that it must belong to the span. So remember again that a span is, um, from the definition, it's the intersection of all the subspaces that contain the spanning set. And it's also a subspace in itself. So for the next part of the proof, basically what we're trying to prove is that every linear combination which can be written as again alpha i times x i is going to belong to the span so first we say just that we're going to say uh, that x represents the linear combinations. And since we know that span of s forms a subspace, it must satisfy the definition of a subspace, which means that for every x1 and x2, alpha 1 x1 times alpha 2 x2 must belong to the span. And we could also keep on going and say that if it's true for the for two vectors that are in the span, it's also going to be true for three vectors in the span and so on. So if we had x1, x2, x3, that belong to the span, then alpha 1 x1 plus alpha 2 x2 plus alpha 3 x3 must also belong to the span, and so on. And so we can generalize 
and say that every x which can be written as a linear combination of any number of factors that are in the span must belong to the span. And so basically in both parts of the proof, um, we use the definition of a uh, subspace since we know that the span of S is definitely a subspace. So um, you actually use this pretty often in proofs. It was also in the, in the previous proof. So just that uh, the sum of two vectors, x1 and x2, is always in the subspace. And also the multiple of any vector, so alpha times x, must also belong to the subspace.